Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the Online Series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the previous episode, we tried out a really powerful team featuring Special, Zekrom, and Comfy. This was able to get to number one on the ladder a couple of months ago by the original creator. And so huge thank you to Nii for the team. I've linked their Reddit post about this team down in the description below. That's how I found out about it initially. And yeah, Special Zekrom is really fun. We've used it before with uh, Kyogre previously, and this is just a different take on it. So looking forward to playing a couple more matches with it today. Thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, I'm curious what you think will be good in Series 13 if you've given that format any thought. So far for me, I haven't honestly. Uh, thought about it at all. I think obviously a lot of people are talking about Pokemon like Magirna, uh, so I definitely have my eye out on that, but from what I've seen, like, Evil Tall Zashin, Kyogre, Calyrex, Shadow Rider still actually look pretty powerful as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and let's get started. All right, our first game of the day here, and we're up against Xerneas Groudon, which is really cool to see, with Thunderous, Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, and Whimsicott. So Xerneas doesn't really feel like the best matchup for Zekrom here. Like, both Xerneas and their Groudon are inherently pretty strong against our Zekrom, right? They both have super effective hits. We can't really deal that much damage to either. So, it makes me think that we probably shouldn't play towards a Dynamax Zekrom here. Charizard feels rather compelling. Um, it's got good speed advantage against most of my opponent's Pokemon. The main problem with Charizard is that I'm a little bit weak into the uh, Thunderous lead for my opponent. So I could go with something like Grimmsnarl and Charizard with Groudon and then Zekrom as the fourth. Venusaur is also interesting here because we do have Koba Berry, so like there's a world in which I can actually lead Venusaur. Uh, that's actually somewhat interesting to me. Like instead of Grim, I think what we could also do is just go with Groudon Venusaur here, especially because of Koba Berry. Groudon Venu, Charizard, Zekrom. Uh, nope, we don't want Zekrom there. Yeah, Groudon, Venu, Charizard, Zekrom. Um, yeah, I just, especially because we're using special Zekrom here, like, it's just gonna be slower than Xerneas. Xerneas can Geomancy on us, that's not good. I don't think Comfy's that valuable either. And the thing is that Venusaur is actually an incredibly good max option into Xerneas because of G-Max Vinelash in itself, uh, but... Also, you resist fairy type attacks, you get max quick to boost your special defense, uh, and then Vine Lash is so so good into Xerneas because it doesn't care about Geomancy, right? It's just one sixth of your HP every turn, regardless of whether or not you have boosts. So, they're gonna go with Thunderous and Xerneas, okay. Now, I'm okay with this, but there are a fair amount of mind games here. Like, the immediate question I have is is the Thunderous Lumberry or Safety Goggles here? Because if you are, it completely changes the dynamic of the matchup. I could just Dynamax Groudon here, for example. I have Sleep Powder Pressure. Could just go for Vine Lash immediately. But the thing is, like, do I really want to max here? Like, if I have Charizard in the back, we probably want to look towards maxing that, right? Um... I think here... If I'm my opponent, what? You could Airstream plus Geomancy immediately? I'm down to just Rock Slide, Max, and actually just go for Vine Lash immediately onto Xerneas here, I think. Basically, like, I'm going for this because I have the Koba Berry, and so if your Thunderous is Life Orb or Assault Vest, if you're Life Orb, you'd maybe contemplate protecting. If you're Assault Vest, maybe you just Dynamax and go for Max Airstream here. If I had gone with Grimstar and Charizard here, I could have probably set up Reflect into G-Max Wildfire on turn one, but it doesn't feel amazing. So, it's kind of just a tricky matchup here. I don't have that much experience uh, fighting against Xerneas either, which makes things a little bit harder for me. But, I, I feel like their willingness to lead this makes me think that the Thunderous is Lumberry or Goggles, and so I don't want to just try to Sleep Powder into it and completely whiff it on turn 1. Uh, I think here it makes sense to maybe go for a Protect with the Xerneas, but because I have Koba Berry, I'm willing to make this trade on turn 1. They don't Protect, okay. I think that's really good. Nice, lots of good damage from Vine Lash immediately. I don't know if Rock Slide plus Vine Lash will finish it off, and they do just go for Airstream, okay? Uh, one other thing to note is that Zekrom actually walls Thunderous decently well, um, so we can use that to our advantage. You can see here that I would have been able to survive even without the Dynamax here, thanks to Koba, so... I don't know. Let's see if there's a Life Orb. It is Life Orb, okay. 
And they just gleam. Okay, that's not a bad trade-off in my opinion. Albeit a little bit frustrating because my opponent did just risk like a Dynamax turn one into uh, a potential Sleep Powder there, right? So if I Sleep Powder and it connects on Thunderous, I feel like my opponent honestly just loses the game. But yeah, ends up working out okay for them. Um, I can Max Guard Venusaur pretty easily this turn. Thunderous could predict that. Max Airstream Groudon and then Moonblast Groudon, for example. I've got Zekrom in the back. Conserving Venusaur here is somewhat valuable, but my Charizard also does really well into Groudon here. So we're really looking for just damage onto Thunderous. So honestly, I think I'm down to just Rock Slide here and then go for the Max Flare onto the Thunderous slot. We know that you're not Assault Vest here, so that plus Rock Slide plus the Residual should be enough to actually get the KO. So I'm willing to play aggressively here. Beautiful. Okay, they go for another Airstream. Yep, onto Groudon. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. If they went for another Gleam, though, I should survive. Um, but if they Moonblast here, then I will faint. Let's see. Yeah, they go for the Moonblast. Okay, nicely played there. Groudon is going to faint there. Part of the problem now is that the Thunderous is at plus two speed, so another max move means it will be able to just... Uh, it will be able to outspeed the Venusaur now, right? So for my opponent's end, you can maybe bring out the Groudon. That would make a lot of sense. If you bring out Groudon, I can bring out Charizard. They bring out Incineroar. Okay, that works for me. Um, this next turn is pretty interesting, right? Like, do you go for Max Airstream? Because the thing is, if my opponent's last one is Groudon, like, I'm actually fine just letting a Pokemon faint here, because Thunderous then faints from Life Orb and the Residual from Vine Lash. I do anticipate my opponent's last one to be Groudon here, right? Um, They could Parting Shot, they could Max Lightning... It honestly might be worth it to conserve the Venusaur here. I think Charizard actually out into Zekrom here, and then Max Guard is fine. Yeah. if Because, like, I could see them going for Lightning or Airstream onto the Charizard slot. If you do that, great, you faint from Life Orb plus the Residual. Okay. So get Zekrom out. The goal is to just not lose a Pokemon this turn, essentially. And Zekrom's a fairly nice switch in, in this position. And they go for Lightning onto that slot. That's really good for us, in my opinion. Especially if they opted not to click Parting Shot here with Incineroar, but you would think it is, right? That was a crit. <laughs> a critical hit from a Dynamax Pokemon there onto Zekrom only did, like, what, 25% at most? And they Flare Blitz into Venusaur. That is super, super good for us. And the reason why that's really good is because now Thunderous faints from Vine Lash, and Incineroar cannot pivot out and then back in, right? And so the inability to pivot back in is really crucial here, uh, because it means you no longer can get a fake out off. And that means that my the, uh, the Venusaur now is in a really interesting spot, right? Uh, important to note that, of course, the Electric Terrain is still up, so I can't put Incineroar to sleep, uh, nor can I put this Incoming Grodon to sleep. Yep. Uh, we haven't seen Assault Vest on the team yet, and Life Orb was on the Thunderous. Assault Vest could be Barry on the Groudon as well. Basically, I think the interesting thing this turn is, do you click Precipice Blades with Groudon? Because um, we haven't won this yet, especially because Zekrom here is slow, right? So, like, I actually might just get outsped by them, which is kind of annoying. I think here I'm willing to go for Earth Power into the Incineroar, and then actually just Giga Drain into the Groudon slot. Because the idea is Groudon may Protect here if you have Protect. We don't see Protect come out, okay. With the lack of Protect there and with how much Giga Drain did, I'm fairly sure that's Assault Vest did. So they're probably just going to go for Blades into Flare Blitz here. Oh, it's actually Rock Tomb. Ah, they're reading into the Charizard switching in. Okay. That makes sense, but I think now this punishes them really heavily. I do just get a free Earth Power off into the Incineroar slot. Not going to pick up the Knockout. Do you have a Berry? Wow, and Taunt! Okay. So they really went in on that play, but I think this loses them the game now. 
Um, although it makes sense, right? I think basically they were like, okay, I I fully expect you to switch out into Charizard here. So if you switch into Charizard, I get the knockout there, and then I get the taunt onto your Venusaur as well, so you can't protect the subsequent turn. Last turn of Sunlight here. I still have Giga Drain. Uh, I'm okay just going for the KO onto... Yeah, we can just protect here. Oh, I actually can't protect. We're taunted. Um, so they're going to press this blades, right? I'm basically trying to think if I can win this game without a Heat Wave miss is the thing. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm down to just Earth Power into Incineroar and Giga Drain into Groudon. Because Sun is expiring here, like Heat Wave isn't going to KO, right? So I want to just get as much damage off onto it as possible. And then Charizard Life Orb Heat Wave should just get the double knockout here. So yeah, Giga Drain doesn't finish it off. But the other thing is that Incineroar here might just click Flare Blitz and that'll KO itself. You still need to hit your Precipice Blades here as well. They are going to double connect, okay. It's enough for the KO. Yep. And now we have this Charizard endgame. And there's Flare Blitz, cool. So Incineroar is going to take recoil damage from that. Venusaur is going to faint. And now we just have a very low HP Groudon against us. Actually, Incineroar still hangs around for a little bit longer as well. Sunlight does fade. If Sun were around for one more turn, then we'd have a pretty definitive victory. Because then I could just click Solar Beam. But unfortunately, here with Charizard, none of our moves are 100% accurate. Um, actually, Solar Beam is, but obviously it takes the turn to charge. So we just have to hope that Heat Wave connects here. That's what it boils down to. I don't really care about missing on the uh, Incineroar here. Just need to hit on Groudon. So 90% of the time we win this game. I guess uh, there is a chance that we could also like get crit by Incineroar. And if we miss that, but Heat Wave is going to double connect here and finish off the game. Perfect. Uh, that was definitely a little bit scary though, especially because my opponent, um, like that one turn where they went for Rock Tomb and Taunt, so, like they went all in on that prediction. But I think it would have been fine if they KO'd Zekrom there, because then Charizard just comes out and get a Life Orb Heat Wave in Sun off, and I think that just wins us the game as well. Um, the main thing I was worried about that turn was that they just go for Precipice Blades plus the um, Flare Blitz, right? But Charizard might still be able to win from that position. The only thing is then I don't get as much free damage on a Groudon. Uh, and I'm not sure Life Orb Heat Wave KOs Groudon at like 60% if they're Assault Vest. So that's what it would boil down to. Um, but ultimately, I think, yeah, you know, Xerneas is kind of tricky here. I can't really play towards Zekrom as much, so I have to lean in on the Sun mode a little bit more. But that's what a well-constructed team does, right? You don't rely solely on one Pokemon to win you the game all the time. Zekrom, of course, can be really strong into a lot of the matchups in this format, especially like opposing Zacian Kyogre, but not so much in this one. So, yeah, another win for the team, and let's keep things going. All right, next game here, and it is just very standard Zacian Kyogre, but there's Whimsicott here. So, you know... This has been a staple team since day one of the format. Uh, we've seen some pretty interesting developments on Whimsicott recently, like Charm and Light Screen um, on one of the teams that, you know, uh, finished number one in the ranked season previously. So, Zekrom theoretically is, like, just amazing here, right? I still have to worry about play rough from the Zacian, but overall, I really value it here. Um... I guess the question as always is like who I want in the back. Because I could just go with the comfy Zekrom lead pretty comfortably here. Groudon in the back. And then for the final Pokemon, probably not Charizard because I think I want to max Zekrom in the matchup. Uh, Venusaur is actually pretty solid here still, especially because of Giga Drain. So I can like heal up against Kyogre. Grimmsnarl is always okay because of screens. So like one other approach we could take here is a uh, Grim Zekrom lead with comfy Groudon in the back, I think. But I really like Comfy Zekrom. I guess they don't have a Grim Snarl though, so like they're not going to be as passive at the start of the game. So maybe I am down for Grim plus Zekrom here. I don't think I tried this mode as much yesterday. Um, oh my gosh, Grim Zekrom, thank you, Comfy Groudon. Yeah, I didn't try this mode as much yesterday, and so I want to give it a shot here. I think like the the main thing is basically. My opponent doesn't have that much good offense into Zekrom, right? And their best offense is going to be them activating my weakness policy, either through Play Rough from Zacian or Max Hailstorm from Kyogre. Otherwise, your third best bet is Behemoth Blade from um, Zacian, right? They're going to go Whimsicott Zacian. Okay, that works for me. So the idea here is I can immediately just set up a Reflect, uh, which is already pretty valuable for me from the Grimmsnarl. The question, though, is what I want to do with Zekrom here, because, of course, it's tempting to just Dynamax and Max Quake into Zacian, but without a weakness policy boost, that's actually not going to get a KO. At least I wouldn't expect it to. And they could also bait me into Quaking into that slot and then switch out Zacian immediately out into Zapdos here. 
I think it's more likely they have Incineroar in the back. But Zapdos would have been quite strong against Charizard and Venusaur. Mm, I also kind of expect them to target Grimmsnarl here on turn 1. You know what, I think I'm down to Earth Power here and Reflect on turn 1. Um, if you play Rough Me, I have Reflect up, I survive. Okay, it is the Charm variant here, that's fine. This is the advantage of Special Zekrom. Given that, then I expect the Grimmsnarl slot to go down here. But that's okay with me. I think trading Grimmsnarl for Reflect and like 60% onto Zekrom is really valuable. Or onto Zacian. I also said 60%, but the Zacian here might just be ultra bulky. So. Like I said, uh, Charm plus Light Screen we ran into a couple days ago. And at the time I was surprised, but turns out, yeah, it was just, you know, is the set that dominated the ladder pretty recently. Oh, that did way less than 60. I mean, that was more like 49. That's okay. Uh, if we expect Kyogre in the back, though, you have to be a little bit careful right now. Hmm. I just don't know who's in the back for my opponent. And I actually feel obligated to bring out Groudon first here, and the main reason for that is because if I bring out Comfy, I just lose the Weather War because they could just Behemoth Blade me, right? That's one of the slight downsides. And I think if I actually just went Comfy Zekrom here, it would have worked out really well, because I could have just gone Draining Kiss immediately, especially with my opponent not expecting the special Zekrom. But it's okay. If we expect Kyogre in the back, like, Zekrom is currently positioned for pretty good success. I think I am willing to just Dynamax here, Quake into Zacian, and just Heat Crash into Whimsicott. Okay, they stay in with bold, so that's good. Basically, the idea is that Zekrom is really good into my opponent's team, and I don't necessarily need to win the Weather War for Zekrom to really thrive. But the thing is, it's like, how valuable is Reflect for me in this game at this point? I'm not sure. Like, if my Grimstar is fainting to it anyway, I mean, the idea of Reflect was to protect Zekrom, right? But my opponent was smart and targeted around it. Yep, so it is the Charm Light Screen set. That's fine. Okay... Oh, they are going to activate our policy for us. Okay, sweet. That is huge. Very nice. And that's where setting up Reflect earlier was really, really handy. Because the thing is, now you have activated my weakness policy. I get the Heat Crash off here, and I get a special defense boost. Oh, and it's not Sash Whimsicott. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's just a double knockout immediately. And this means now I can actually win the Weather War. The debate, though, is basically, like, do I actually care about winning the Weather War? Because I could essentially trade Groudon for a free switch in into Comfy, and then Comfy can get a free Draining Kiss onto Lazacron, which might be actually more valuable for me in this game. So, yeah, this is what I was uh, talking about when I was covering the team yesterday as one of the approaches, which is Grim Zekrom instead of Comfy Zekrom, because often your opponents will actually kindly activate the weakness policy for you, which is really handy. So, it is Incineroar and Kyogre. No Zapdos in the back, which is also really good to see. Okay. So part of the debate right now is, do I actually want to switch out Groudon? And I actually lean towards no here, truthfully. So we're at plus two special attack. They have Reflect. Uh, or sorry, they have Light Screen. We have Reflect, which doesn't really matter here. Groudon is at plus one special defense. I've only committed one turn of Dynamax so far as well. It's like kind of tempting to go for Max Quake here, but I think it's fine to honestly just click Max Lightning in this position. Yeah, I think I'm down for Max Lightning and switch out here. It's it's like tempting to try to survive, right, with, um, or like sacrifice Groudon to get a free switch in a Comfy, but Comfy provides me with way less offense in this endgame than Groudon does. Yeah, and you're basically forced to Dynamax here, right, which makes it trickier for my opponent as well. I have a special defense boost as well, right? So basically, if you click Max Hillstorm into Zekrom, I actually expect to survive thanks to the special defense boost and all the bulk that we have. And then I get a plus two Max Lightning off into your Kyogre slot. That probably doesn't KO because you have Light Screen up now and uh, you know, Kyogre's just pretty specially defensive, but that's okay. Ooh, the Max Guard is... Okay, so is it Parting Shot coming out? Okay, it's just Darkest Lariat. That's fine. I don't care about that as an option too much, honestly. I'm fine to just click Max Lightning here now, and then just go for a Floral Healing onto the Zekrom. 
it was like i you know didn't know the item on kyogre here so i was like oh if you're just the assault vest set right then it's a guaranteed max lightning and then i just get another knockout onto you the next turn it was a little bit tempting to click max quake into the incinerous slot or, or even max lightning the incinerous slot to potentially avoid a shuka berry Yep, but now we heal back up. They're actually going to click Max Geyser. Okay, I think that's actually really smart, because they recognize, hey, like, Comfy can heal up here, um, right? And if I don't target the Comfy, then... Um, and I target Zekrom instead, then it's still going to cause me some problems. And it's actually Life Orb Kyogre. Okay. So, Max Lightning here. You shouldn't take this super well. That's a one-hit knockout. Beautiful. Oh, that was a crit. I do want to do the damage calc after this game, because I'm, I, I honestly don't know whether or not Zekrom can take, like, get that KO, but given that they're Life Orb, that normally implies they're a little bit less uh, offensive, but I definitely had some really favorable RNG rolls with this team so far. And yeah, they just go for Darkest Lariat. I mean, Lariat, they're, like, it gets chip damage, right? But then the idea is I would get Groudon out, I have the Assault Vest onto it, uh, and then, like, Zekrom's never losing against the Incineroar. I shouldn't say never, but it's, you know, in a really good position against the Incineroar. Uh, and then, like, the Kyogre, even if it survives the Max Lightning, should be at really low HP, where I can just finish it off with one more move here. But, yeah, this was just the perfect demonstration of why Zekrom can be such a, an amazing Pokemon here in this format. So, now we can just Rising Voltage and Precipus Blades. I think uh, what was really big for us in this game was, uh, turn one, I didn't waste a turn of my Dynamax on Zekrom, right? So, it gave me an extra turn to work with in this game. Two, once again, you can see the value of the special Zekrom here where my opponent expected to just shut it down early game with Charm, uh, and that didn't actually end up working out. Uh, and then three, yeah, there's Zacian very kindly activated weakness policy for us, right? Uh, so the policy activation was very easy for Zacian to just deal so much, or Zekrom to deal so much more damage. But let's pull up the damage calc real quick because I do want to know how we fare against uh, Kyogre and Light Screen because that's a fairly important, I think, calc to know. So you can see here that critical hit definitely mattered in terms of picking up that knockout. Thanks to light screen, uh, maximum we only do 83% and minimum we do 70%. So it's a huge amount of damage, right? But it's not enough to pick up the knockout. Uh, that crit obviously just allowed us to win the game immediately. I think without it, we still would have been in an okay position. But then the thing is, you know, they got the knockout onto the comfy there. I then bring out Groudon. And so I was actually curious about the Groudon damage calc here. And so, in the sun, Max Geyser there never KOs, but if you are modest and you have Max Hailstorm, uh, you do have a 25% chance to one-shot, right? But the problem for Kyogre in that position is you can only knock out one Pokemon at the time, right? Because then Zekrom's Dynamax ends, Kyogre is at around, you know, 20%-ish or so, uh, Incineroar is at full health, but then it's like, um, you know, Groudon has Precipice Blades against both of those. With Kyogre then, you know, do you just go for the Hailstorm onto the Groudon? If you do, then the Zekrom just KOs the Kyogre, and then Zekrom wins 1v1 against Incineroar. You could decide to max guard with the Kyogre, but that doesn't make too much sense because Incineroar is never really doing too much there. So I think we still would have been fine other than them going for max hailstorm onto the zekrom and us missing precipice blades uh, but the grotto that we had actually did have thunder punch as well so i think if that crit you know didn't happen then i bring out Groudon, kyogre still healthy and then the next turn i just click rising voltage and thunder punch into kyogre and that combination will guarantee a knockout and whoever is left remaining between the two should always win the 1v1 against incineroar as well so yeah once again, always important to do like post game analysis and just see what you would have done if you didn't get lucky, uh, because you never really want to win just off getting lucky, right? You want to have a clear path to victory. And so in this one, I felt like even if we didn't get the crit there, especially because we had Thunder Punch on Groudon, we didn't even have to risk any Precipice Blades misses, and the Electric Turn was set up as well for it, so you know pretty easily get the knockout onto Kyogre there. So yeah, either way though, let's keep things going. All right, next game of the day, and we are up against Charizard, Thunderous, Kyogre, Zacian, and Amoongus, Whimsicott. I expect this to be one of the top teams going into Worlds. Um, and I don't know if this is Slim, uh, who is the streamer, but if so, it's cool to fight against him. Uh, he's qualified for Day 1 of Worlds this year. Um, uh, so it's like... <sighs> Zachrom is what I want to play towards, right? But the stress is... What am I worried about with Zekrom, honestly? It's pretty good across the board here, I'd argue. It's mainly shenanigans from Whimsicott, like not knowing its moveset. But I think we could just go with Comfy Zekrom in this game with Groudon and then a fourth in the back. It could be another Grimmsnarl and Zekrom combo. Because what's the scariest offensive duo from his end here? Zacian plus Kyogre, maybe? Zacian plus Kyogre. 
Uh, Thunderous plus Ossian. Okay, I'm I'm down for the Grim Snarl combo. Like how we approached the last game with Comfy Groudon in the back. I think like the only downside here is that I really like Venusaur, but in this matchup, it's not really that good anyway because we're going up against Thunderous and Charizard. Um, but the thing is, there's a decent chance neither come out here, right? I think the mode that makes most sense is Zacian, Kyogre, Whimsicott, and Thunderous personally, which Zacrom has a really good time into, but it's Charizard, Zacian, interesting. Okay. So with this, it's pretty easy to just set up a Reflect immediately. Same idea as what we were going for in the previous game. The question is what I want to commit to with Zekrom here, right? Because I could obviously Max Lightning the Charizard. And yeah, my fear is if I led Comfy here, like, turn one, Zekrom can just get doubled up into, play rough, Max Airstream, and I just take so much damage, or Max Wildfire. Special defense boosts are really valuable in this game, so I think I'm down to start the game with the Max Quake into the Zacian and just a Reflect. Because the idea is that, like, we boost Zekrom fairly quickly, right? And if Zacian decides to commit, like, a play rough onto the Zekrom slot, it accelerates the game super, super fast in my favor. Because then Quake gets the knockout onto Zacian, and you're left with pretty much all um, physical attacker or special attackers, right? So, I, basically, I really value Grimmsnarl's Reflect in this matchup, as Charizard switches out into Amoongus, okay? Yeah, I really value Grimmsnarl's Reflect in this matchup, because it's super nice in dealing with the um, Zacian's Play Rough and Behemoth Blades, right? And I, I think that trading Grimmsnarl to protect myself a little bit from it is valuable. Uh, I think it's a really good switch. Uh, the Charizard into Amoongus is a really good switch here. So, we'll see. Because um, Amoongus... Charizard, Kyogre. None of those actually are super good into Zekrom, but the thing is, I'm going to have to most likely max Lightning here just to set up Electric Terrain to prevent Amoongus from actually getting Spores off, and that's kind of annoying. Oh, it is the Policy Activation. Beautiful. That puts us in a really, really good spot, because the thing is, now this next turn, I can get my second screen up. I get a Knockout onto the Zacian immediately as well. So, this is the power of Zekrom. And that's the thing, right? I think because I have Grimmsnarl, I'm willing, like, I feel really safe with the Zekrom in front of Zacian, right? Um, so I'm glad to, like, highlight different modes with this team, because I feel like yesterday I wasn't playing with this combination as much, and it's, it's just really strong. Um, and it's been e even better for us, because our opponents have activated our policy for us today, right? So now if it's Amoongus Charizard plus Kyogre, that's three special attackers, right? Um, I guess Amoongus could have foul play, but generally, like, you know, I'm not taking too much damage. So you could bring out Charizard, um, I would probably want to just max Lightning, set up Electric Terrain. The thing is, I could actually just max Warm Wind the Amoongus here. Hmm. Definitely want to set up Light Screen right now. I could also just Warm Wind Charizard, but I don't know if that's a KO onto Dynamax Zard. I could also Quake here for a Special Defense boost. At plus two, Max Lightning should KO, or Max Wormwind should KO, but I do run the risk of it being Focus Hash, and I actually get hit by Spore, and I don't want to risk that. So I'm always, I think I'm down to just Lightning Charizard here and Light Screen. Basically, the idea is, okay, if Amoongus goes for Rage Powder, so be it. Uh, Lightning still does meaningful damage, and I set up Electric Terrain. Um, if I was 100% confident, I mean, if I knew Amoongus weren't Focus Sash, then I like the idea of Wormwinding Charizard because then it's like, okay, if Amoongus protects. Wormwind still does a lot to Charizard, but the reality here is that it's just Charizard outside of Sun. I have a special defense boost, and I'm setting up Light Screen. Okay, Moongus, let's just go for Rage Powder. Yep, it's the best play for them here. So, playing a little bit cautiously here, but I'm okay with this trade generally, I would say. It's actually Max Airstream. Okay. Uh, this is actually the other important thing about clicking Max Lightning here, because if you're running Max Speed Amoongus, like, 90 speed, uh, after Airstream, you could actually outpace me. And actually, because we had no speed investment on Sakurom, if they were actually just faster here, uh, if they were not 90 speed, like, they could have just actually gone for that, um, and spored me instead. But then, obviously, Lightning would have just gone into Charizard, so it's pretty risky. Okay... 
Uh, last turn of Dynamax on my end. I don't mind switching out into Comfy because I want to heal up Zekrom, I think, ideally. Uh, either Pokemon can protect here. I don't really care about what Amoongus has to do right now. Lightning will KO Amoongus. So I'm down to just max Lightning Charizard again and then switch out into Comfy here. And then I can just go Floral Healing, Rising Voltage. Yeah, if, like, if we knew Amoongus weren't Focus Sash, then we would have gotten the Knockout last turn. Then I'd probably just Scary Face Max Lightning and then win the game there. But I want to respect Sash here, even though they do have Whimsicott on their team, because it's best of one. Get Comfy out. Okay, Amoongus just goes for Rage Powder once again. That's fine. I would expect Wildfire now, but it's another Airstream. Okay. Staggering the Wildfire, which I think is really smart, actually. Basically, stall out my Dynamax and then Wildfire. Yeah, I think that's clever. Max Quake would have been really nice here, actually, for a special defense boost then. Because I don't expect Zekrom to faint. Like, I have Light Screen set up right now, as well as a special defense boost, and I'm going to be able to just Floral Healing Zekrom, so I feel like I should be in a really good spot. But for how good turn 1 played out, like, maybe I played a little bit too safe here and respected Amoongus a little bit too much. But now I can just go for Floral Healing onto Zekrom. Okay, Dynamax is stalled out. And this is one of the really nice things about Zekrom in this format, right? It's super good into Charizard and Kyogre, and both of these are, you know, two of the most common Pokemon in the format. Uh, the question is who I want a Rising Voltage here. I think I'm down to target the Kyogre slot. And then just Floral Healing into Zekrom. Because Charizard's never really beating Zekrom in the endgame, and they don't protect with Kyogre, which is perfect. So as long as I don't get crit or frozen here, we should be good. Let's see. Okay, it's just a third airstream, that's fine. No wildfire ever coming out, which is interesting. You can see how valuable the light screen and the special defense boost has been, right? Okay... And it's just Water Spout. Okay, cool. Works for me. Great. Uh, with that, then, we get the clean knockout onto Kyogre. Grimmsnarl comes out. Scary Face Charizard um, into Rising Voltage, and we should be good. But this game ended up being easier because uh, my policy was activated by Play Rough, right? So, like, Zekrom is honestly really legit into these Kyogre Zacian teams. Like, we've won every game that we've had with it um, into this matchup, right? But... This team, I think, took me a while to get the hang of because I was making pretty poor leads when I was first picking it up. But, like, realizing, like, Grim Zekrom with Comfy Groudon in the back is a really viable mode, I think, was very valuable for me here. And ultimately, I think, like, there's just not that much offense, right, into Zekrom here as a whole. Like, Zekrom actually single-handedly has a really good matchup. Uh, Whimsicott with Moonblast is probably what would scare me the most. But now I can just Rising Voltage into Charizard. Uh, Scary Face this turn isn't relevant because Charizard, you know, went for Airstream three times, so it's just faster. But uh, another Scary Face then means Groudon can come out, and then we can just Thunder Punch. But I don't think Charizard ever KOs the Zekrom here anyway. You need to go for Hurricane Confusion into, you know, like, multiple Confusion hits. But Zekrom just completely walls Charizard here and gets the Rising Voltage. Beautiful. That's the thing. If you actually activate Policy on Zekrom, like for me uh with this team it makes my life so much easier because then i don't have to rely on uh bringing comfy out and activating the policy on it so yeah uh that early like immediate play rough just put me in a such an advantageous position and being able to just get the one shot onto zashin was also really helpful because you can imagine if zashin protects on turn one i max quake into a protect then turn two amoongus can you know rage powder and you can essentially stall out zekrom's dynamax completely in three turns but thanks to amoongus support right but by getting that knockout immediately it accelerated the battle so quickly where i didn't have to go for any uh, advanced predictions right i could just play very very safely in, line in a linear manner uh and still be able to secure the game for us here so yeah we've had a crazy win streak with this team so far i think that's six in a row now or seven in a row because we played four yesterday so yeah i'm gonna look for one more okay our eighth game with this team rank 43 and it is kyogre groudon dual weather okay i still haven't tried one of these teams yet um it's definitely you know i i loved dual primals back in 2016 um you know back when it was a restricted format and you know, Kyogre Groudon here is not the same as Dual Primals back then, but still a cool duo. So, I like Zekrom. Who do I want to max here, is the thing. Oh, 
like Venusaur is good, but falls off against Charizard. I, I think I want to have two max options coming into this game. Essentially, like, flex it, and if they don't play towards Groudon early, maybe we can just max Zekrom. Uh, this, I think what makes this tricky is all of my Pokemon are solid. And I don't know who to not bring. Uh, okay, I mean, Grim Zekrom's worked out really well today. Uh, actually, in this one, I think I want Comfy Zekrom. Uh, Groudon, and then... Do I not bring Grim? Venusaur or Charizard is the fourth. I'm down for Venusaur here, because, like, Venusaur inherently is good into both Kyogre and Groudon. I can also use it as a Sleep Powder switch in, and if my opponent brings out Groudon and sets up the Sun, my Venusaur can take advantage of it as well. So for all those reasons, I think it's solid. Okay, let's see. Venusaur Kyogre. Okay, um... The problem here is... Just Sleep Powder. That's a pretty big problem, actually. Uh, something like just Water Spout and Sleep Powder immediately into Zekrom. Especially if you're Sash Venusaur. That's really bad. So the question is, do I try to play around a potential Sleep Powder? Oh, I do have Ally Switch as well, actually. I think Ally Switch is actually the best bet here. Because I can also set up Electric Terrain. <sighs> the thing is, I think Kyogre actually might switch out into Groudon here is the thing. Okay, I'm actually going to Dynamax Lightning into Venusaur and Ally Switch, expecting them to switch Kyogre out into Groudon and then Sleep Powder at the Zekrom slot. There's the switch. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, and then I also Lightning it into Venusaur because I don't want... Uh, I want the Electric Terrain up so that they can't Sleep Powder me next turn. So far, so good. Seeing that switch in itself already makes me feel good because it means Comfy's not just fainting on turn 1 to a Water Spout. But if they read the ally switch and then sleep powder into comfy, kudos. That's just a uh, really good job. Uh, it's tough because I almost didn't want to Dynamax Zekrom on turn one. I think like Draco Meteor into Venusaur and then Draining Kiss to finish off Venusaur is also compelling. Okay, so here's ally switch. Ah, they sleep powdered into the comfy slot. <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah, I mean, I did not have an easy way out uh, against that lead, meaning that in the post-game reflection, I want to think about how I could have beaten um, Groudon Venusaur as a lead specifically, but now we're in really bad shape. I think we just hope for a quick wake-up here. So Draining Kiss into Zekrom, activate the policy there, and then just go for Max Wormwind onto Groudon. Because they, they actually don't have super good offense into the um, Zekrom here. Okay, they stay in with both. They're not Dynamaxing either, which is interesting. Policy activates. Yeah, they're just clicking Sleep Powder. It's funny because I talked about having Venusaur as a switch into Sleep Powder, but I didn't feel safe switching in last turn. This turn, I think it could have been appropriate, though. And they actually just Blades to activate Policy anyway, so... Yeah, Comfy into Venusaur this turn, and then just Max Wormwind would have been stronger. But the thing is, like, there is a chance that their Groudon also had no speed investment. And we do actually manage to wake up, though, which is huge. Okay. So we got Max Wormwind off. Ah, their Assault Vest Ground on, which isn't super shocking, obviously, but makes my life a little bit more difficult here. I will survive a Blades now. They probably just want to Sleep Powder into the Zekrom slot again. And Presbus Blades. I could burn a turn of sleep. I could switch into my own Venusaur right now. And Max Guard. Uh, not getting the Knockout on Groudon is really bad. Because, like, their Groudon applies a lot of offensive pressure with Precipice Blades, but I think turn 2 of this game I didn't play super well. Nice play on their end on turn 1, though, honestly. That was really well done. And they bring out Grimmsnarl, okay. Interesting. Do you max Venusaur at any point? Yeah! <laughs> okay, interesting. That makes sense, especially if you're trying to, like, max Quake into the Zekrom slot right now. Because my offense against Venusaur is just kind of lacking at this point. I've already taken so much damage. 
So, yeah, I think uh, my opponent played turn one and turn two of this battle very, very nicely. And I didn't do a great job trying to mitigate Sleep Powder. I think uh, a Venusaur lead would have been more appropriate for me here. Wow, they just Vine Lash right into the switch out. So, perfectly played. Okay. Now, if you have Max Quake, that's going to hurt Zekrom, obviously. Maybe I just contemplate switching it out, honestly. I'm trying to figure out how I actually deal enough damage to Venusaur at this point in the game. Because Venusaur kind of wrecks all of my Pokemon now that they've stalled out my Dynamax. I don't know the item on it. I do have Weather Ball. Two turns of Sunlight left. I guess I can always like overextend and not max quick Zekrom for some reason. You like Weather Ball and Draco Meteor. They also might be Policy Venusaur. Yeah, and they get light screen up. I think the problem for me in this matchup is that, you know, it's Zekrom plus Groudon against their Kyogre and Groudon. Oh, they do go for Flare, though. Okay. Uh, I mean, light screen is up, but this is still a plus two Draco Meteor into Venusaur. The thing is, even if we get this KO, I don't think we're in that good of a position. But yeah, with light screen, it's just too much. I think uh, this game has finally highlighted one of the slight downsides of Zekrom, which is, like, I didn't have great speed control in this matchup, and so being outsped by Groudon and Kyogre is not really great, right? So I think if I were to edit this team, I'd maybe give Zekrom just a little bit of speed investment so you outspeed, like, the Kyogres and Groudons that aren't really fast and maybe have, like, you know, 60 speed EVs kind of in that range. Um, Is there any path to victory here? If I bring up Groudon, I can bait the attack, the Vine Lash into Groudon, pivot Groudon out into Comfy, Draco the Venusaur again. But I think it's looking kind of tough here. Like, I needed to mitigate the sleep better in this game, and I think I should have led Venusaur. The The main reason I didn't was because I was really nervous about their uh, the Charizard on their team, but given how our last matchup against Charizard just played out, I think that a lot of players will not be very willing to bring Charizard even into the matchup to begin with. Uh, and a Venusaur lead would have actually put me in a much better position in this game, because I actually could have angled to just Dynamax it immediately. And if I max Venusaur, it's a free Vine Lash into the Kyogre slot in that game, and they have Groudon and Grimm in the back, right? Okay, there's Vine Lash. <laughs> that doesn't even KO! No! <laughs> yeah, well played. It also could be interesting to give enough Zekra, uh, speed investment onto Zekrom so you just outspeed um, Venusaur, right? But the bulk is really important on this team as well because you want to survive attacks like Play Rough from Zacian with, you know, relative ease. But yeah, really, really nicely played Venusaur game here. I think ultimately my opponent's uh, team preview selection was better and the adjustment I'd make here in a best of three is, yeah, leading Venusaur for sure. Venusaur Zekrom could be interesting, like mixing it up instead of just going with the same things I've been going for. Grim Venu could always work. Um, I think in this game I could actually maybe drop Comfy as well, because it's very likely they'll activate policy on Zekrom, because their best ways of dealing with it are just super effective attacks, right? Uh, Max Quake from Venusaur and Groudon, and then Max Hailstorm from Kyogre. So I think something like a Venusaur Grim lead with Groudon Zekrom on the back could be appropriate in this one. Um... I mean, there's still one more turn of Vine Lash, right? Yeah. There's no way in which we win this. So, we'll just forfeit. Because I'm always fainting with Zekrom after this turn. Um, I guess I could have played it out for one more turn. You know, hope for a crit. Venusaur always just KO Zekrom there, actually, anyway, though. So you could always just guarantee that I don't get an attack off there. So, yeah. Uh, that was a really cool dual weather team. And basically, this one, I got a little bit... Uh, kind of freaked out in team preview because I was a little bit nervous about the Charizard. My opponent didn't even bring it, and then their Venusaur put in so much work against me, right? Mainly because of Sleep Powder. Really, really great prediction on turn one of the battle as well, by the way. Um, but I, I felt like I was already in a pretty big hole uh, to start that game, so I was like, okay, uh, I might as well try to make an aggressive prediction here to get myself back into it. And if the Sleep Powder did actually go into the Comfy slot, it actually would have been in a really good spot going into turn two, I think, because then you can't Sleep Powder my Zekrom in the subsequent turn, and then you're likely going to activate the Weakness Policy for me, right? And then I can take advantage of that so i think the game would have been completely differently if sleep powder connected on the other slot or if it just missed on turn one but unfortunately for us uh yeah that was not the case so yeah 
Either way, though, definitely a really well played game by my opponent there, and I think that I, yeah, should have just uh, played towards Venusaur a little bit more, especially because Venusaur is really good against Kyogre, Grot on their Venusaur, and against their Charizard, I could angle for a Sleep Powder into it as well. I think even a Venusaur Zekrom lead would have been uh, solid in that one. So, yeah. Either way, though, the win streak does finally end with the Zekrom team, but it is absolutely amazing, and if you're looking for a really fun team to kind of beat Zosh and Kyogre with, this would definitely be one of my picks at the moment. So, thanks so much as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day, and I'll see you all soon. All right. Peace.